Solving systems in three variables. Systems involving three variables may be modeled on the three-dimensional x, y, z plane. In the figure, we can see the x and y axis modeled in red and green. Then the z axis is coming through the origin to create the third dimension. The sample point one, two, three is shown in the next figure. You would go one unit in the positive x direction, two units in the positive y direction, and then three units up in the positive z direction. We can see that point one, two, three modeled on the three dimensional plane. A solution of a three variable system is an ordered triple whose coordinates make each equation true. The graph of an equation in three variables is a plane. The solution is a point in the three-dimensional plane that all equations share. Just like systems of two variables, systems of three variables can have one solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solution. Take a look and determine how many solutions each figure has. In the first figure, we see all three planes are parallel. They never intersect, so no solution. Now the second figure, we see that blue plane is intersecting the pink and the yellow, but all three do not intersect at the same time. Our third figure is demonstrating one solution. We see all three planes intersecting at one point, one ordered triple. The fourth figure shows an infinitely many solutions. The three planes are intersecting at a line and any point on that line is a solution to the system. Last, we see the planes intersecting, but once again, all three do not intersect at the same place. Therefore, no solution to the system of equations. Now it's time to solve a three variable system. We're gonna learn this by using elimination first. The key to solving a three variable system is showing your work and being really careful with each step. So we're gonna do it a special way. We're gonna organize our steps with first, second, and third step. I want you to write first step in a circle. The first step is gonna be to eliminate one of our variables from all three equations in our system. Let's start by numbering our equations, equations one, two, and three. Now we wanna choose the variable that looks the nicest to go after and also maybe already has at least one negative sign so that when we add straight down, we're able to cancel that variable. Which one looks the nicest here? I'm leaning towards y. In the first equation, I have negative y. In the second, I have plus y. And in the third, I have negative y. Alternating signs so I can add equation one and two together to eliminate y, and then I can add equation two and three together to eliminate y. The key is I have to eliminate y from all three equations. So first, we're gonna add equation one and equation two together. We've added out variable y in equation one and two, but I'm left with a two variable equation still. We're gonna call this equation four and put it on hold for now. We still need to get rid of y in equation three. So I'm gonna pair equation three with equation two because I already have alternating signs and add out the y. Looks like I'm left with a two variable equation again. We'll call this equation five. Now that we've completed step one, do you understand why I chose to get rid of y from the get-go? Looking at that original system, y was the variable that had a really nice leading coefficient. It was just one y all the way through. And it alternated signs between my equations. So like equation one and two paired perfectly together because I had a positive y and then a negative y. And then equation two and three paired perfectly together because I had a negative y and a positive y. So they just added right out. Now it's time for our second step. So write second for me in a box. To solve, we need to get rid of one more variable. So let's put equation four and five together and look for what variable would be the nicest to get rid of. Wanting to stick with elimination here, if I look at my x's, I have a 2x and a 3x. Those aren't easy to make alike. And I have a 4z and a 5z. Those aren't easy to make alike. So it's kind of like whichever variable I choose to get rid of, I'm just going to stick with it. Let's go with x. If I want 2x and 3x, to have the same leading coefficient with opposite signs, 6x would be what I'd go after. 
So I'm gonna multiply the first equation by three and the second equation by negative two. Remember, opposite signs. Before we add down, we really wanna make sure we multiplied correctly. We multiplied to every single term in the equation. That includes the equals negative four gets multiplied by three. The equals negative three gets multiplied by negative two. All the pieces. As I add down, those x's add out and I'm left with two z equals negative six. So I can divide off my two and get z equals negative three. Now let's finish solving this smaller system. So plug back in z equals negative three to solve for x. I chose to plug z equals negative three into equation five. In some cases, one equation is easier than the other. Looks like I'm gonna get x equals four. Now it's time for our third step. I'm gonna put this step in a triangle. Now that I have a solution for z and x, I just need my solution for y. So I can plug in these two variables to any one of my original equations, one, two, or three. I'm gonna choose to plug mine into equation two because if I'm solving for y, that equation already has a positive y. And look at that, we got y equals two. Now it's time to write this as an ordered triple, x, y, z. So four, comma two, comma negative three. Now that you have the ordered triple, how could you check your answer? Well, we used equation two to find the missing variable y, so all we would need to do is test that ordered triple in equation one and equation three. So long as it works in all three equations, we know it's the solution to the system. Now it's time for another. How do we start? Label the equations one, two, three. Do you see the variable that would be the nicest to eliminate from all three equations? Highlight it, take a guess. If you guessed Z, you would be right. Now, why did I choose Z? Because in equation three, we have a Z with the opposite sign. So we could pair equation one and three together and two and three together. Now, things aren't as nice this time, right? Because if I add down right now, will my Z be eliminated? Nope. I need to multiply the equation three by what? Six. Let's multiply equation three by six and then add down to eliminate Z. Stop, wait a minute, check. Did you multiply everything correctly? Did you get negative 60? Okay, you can keep going. And there sits our equation four, nine X plus 15 Y equals negative 51. Is step one done? No, I still need to eliminate Z in my other equation. I paired one and three together, but it's still sitting in equation two. So I'm gonna pair two and three together because those opposite signs. Once again, we're trying to eliminate Z here. So what would you have to multiply by to eliminate Z from equation three? Take a moment, try it out. See if you can get equation five. It's time to solve our two variable system using equations four and five. Neither X or Y is easier to solve for here. So I'm gonna choose to eliminate my X. Pause, solve the two variable system for X and Y. I got y equals negative four and x equals one. Pause and really check through your work if you didn't get the right answer here. Find your mistake. Third and final step, let's plug x and y back into one of our original three equations. This time, I'm gonna choose equation one and solve for z. We can plug into any of the equations. I like plugging into equation two because y has a coefficient of one and they're all positive. The ordered triple is one, negative four, three. In this third example, let's practice substitution. As I look at the three equations, the third equation says x equals negative two z minus eight. 
So I'll be able to take that expression that x equals and substitute it into equation 1 in place of x and equation 2 in place of x. Once I do that, I will have a system of two variables. Let's rewrite equation 1 substituting x's equivalent value. Let's go ahead, distribute, and clean up this equation. Let's label our simplified equation, equation 4. Next, let's substitute equation 3, the equivalent value for x, into equation 2 and simplify to get our new equation 5. Check your equation 5. There were a lot of negatives to be distributed. Now that we have equation 4 and equation 5, we have a two-variable system to solve. There's two ways we could approach this. We could solve equation 4 for y and use substitution again, or we can multiply one of the equations by negative 1 and eliminate the z's. Choose your method, solve the two-variable system, see if you can go ahead and sub back in to solve for all three variables. Solving the two-variable system, I had y equals 1 and z equals negative 5. Then I looked in equation 3, x equals, all I had to do is substitute in the value for z, and I had the value for x. Our ordered triple is 2, 1, negative 5. Do you remember how to check if our answer is correct? It has to be true for all three equations. So we can simply check equation 1 and equation 2 to make sure it works. All right, now let's think back to the beginning of the lesson. Do you remember those figures where we decided if it had one solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solution? How are we going to know algebraically whether or not it has a solution? Well, similar to the systems for two variables, if you get a false math statement like 0 equals 7, then we would have no solution. If you get a true math statement, but the variables have added out, for example, 7 equals 7, then that would have infinitely many solutions. Do you remember what infinitely many solutions look like? When all three planes intersected in a line. Triple. Triple. <laughs> Triple. Don't, make, don't get me mad. <laughs> Opposite. Okay. Opposite. Okay. Oh, no. no. It's right here! It's right here! No!